What's up, guys? Um, I'm going to pray before we get into it. Um, yeah, Lord, we thank you um, yeah, for your spirit, Lord. Um, I pray that you're really with us tonight, Lord, and um, yeah, teaching us about the underground church, about what other Christians around the world have to go through just to have a relation with you. Um, I pray you soften our hearts in this time and that, yeah, we can really hear from your word. Amen. Now, that game we just played out there is called Underground Church. It's a youth at NBC favourite and we play it every year. But it also comes with a very strong message about Christian persecution. Now, it's all fun and games when we run around as police and arrest Christians at Nawi. But the fact is, this is a reality for many. Millions of Christians around the world are facing persecution for their faith faith in Jesus Christ. Some are disowned by their families, others are tortured or imprisoned, others are driven away from their homes, and others still face death. We're about to play a song and video by a Christian rapper who wrote this track called I'm Good. He wrote it in direct response to Christian persecution at the hands of extremists in Egypt and to emphasize the Christians' attitudes in the face of death. He also wrote the song to try and spread awareness of Christian persecution. Try and listen to the words. Death is just a doorway to take me to my faithful lover The lover of my soul's with me You can shake the brother But you never knock me down to take me under Bring the thunder Let the storms come behind us and hurt us They can't take our Lord from us Bro, we gotta subvert it Not guilty, not guilty He's with us and he stays present He never leaves me He even gives me stage presence Partner, you know I'm good to go Pressure creates diamonds and fire and fires to go Ain't nothing on this I'm living for tomorrow, today is out of control, for sure I'm good, take down my money, I'm good, get caught in pain, I'm good, yeah they can kill me, I'm good, take that's game, I'm good, I ain't seen, and we don't feel any pain, I'm the same, you can't take us out the game, cause homie we good Now, for those of us who don't know, a martyr is someone who is killed because of their beliefs, usually religious beliefs, and persecution is someone who is treated, and persecution is the hostility and ill treatment and oppression of someone, especially because of race or political or religious beliefs. Now, persecution of Christians is not a new or surprising thing. Jesus faced severe persecution while he was here on earth. He was tortured and even executed on a cross. And ever since then, followers of Jesus have been getting persecuted. In John 15, verse 18, Jesus himself says, If the world hates you, know that it hated me before it hated you. In fact, every single one of Jesus' apostles was persecuted for their faith. Matthew was killed by sword in Ethiopia. Mark died in Egypt as he was dragged through the streets by horses. Luke was hung in Greece. And John was exiled to to the island of Patmos after a failed attempt on his life. Most of the apostles were given the option to deny Jesus and keep their life. Despite this, all the other apostles were killed for their faith. 
Now, these apostles all taught on persecution and taught that it was not their fate alone. Paul wrote in 2 Timothy 3.12, Indeed, all those who try to live a godly life in Jesus Christ will be persecuted. Despite this, Matthew 5 verse 10 says, Blessed are those who face persecution for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 2,000 years later and still, persecution of followers of Jesus is very much alive today. In countries such as Iran, Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia, it is forbidden to practice religions except for Islam. Conversion is punishable, punishable by death. But Christians are often persecuted by their own families before the government can arrest them. Houses that are suspected of holding underground churches are often raided by a sect of the police called the secret police or the religious police. As of 2014, North Korea is the top of Open Door USA's list as the worst country to live as a Christian for the 13th consecutive year. In North Korea, anyone discovered engaging in religious activities is subject to arrest, detention, disappearance, torture, execution. At this moment, there are estimated to be 50,000 to 70,000 Christians imprisoned in labour camps because of their faith. 50,000 to 70,000 human beings in hard labour camps because they believe in Jesus. It is incredibly difficult to be a Christian in these countries. Every single Christian has to make the daily choice to face the risks of following Jesus and often give up any opportunity of having a peaceful life. Christians are also persecuted at the hands of extremists following Boko Haram in northern Nigeria and members of the extremist group ISIS. As I said before, many Christians around the world are forced to make a decision to deny Jesus and live in peace or to proclaim Jesus and be persecuted. We're going to have some stories. My name is Gajal Niladri. I'm 38 years old and a pastor in India. One day, I had been warned by a group of Hindu extremists to stop evangelizing, but I was unfazed by their threats and I continued to boldly distribute Bibles and share God's word in India. On July the 1st, while driving home on a borrowed motor scooter, two men suddenly attacked me with their faces covered with handkerchiefs. After knocking me off the scooter, the men began to viciously beat me. When several Christians came to my aid, the assailants fled. I was near death and was rushed to the hospital where doctors treated me for severe head wounds and internal injuries. Over the past three years, I had often encountered threats and beatings, but this time it felt different. Previously, the extremists had only wanted to stop my activities. This time, they intended to kill me. Since the attack, I've returned with my family to my hometown village. I was raised in a Hindu family, and I am the only follower of Jesus among my Hindu relatives. The potential for opposition from them gives me a deep concern for the well-being of my children. So I sent them to live in a children's home for their safety and protection. I'm slowly recovering, but I maintain my commitment to continue in full-time ministry. In spite of the danger, I will never waver from my calling. Two days after the attack, I declared from my hospital bed, even if I die, I will die for the Lord. It is my responsibility to preach the gospel and I will continue doing it. And I will live by that statement. I am a 14-year-old boy living in Iraq. I live with my family, my dad, and my three younger brothers. We follow Heshua. You guys might know him as Jesus. One day when we were at home, Men from an extremist group named ISIS stormed into our house. They grabbed my father and they said to him, say the words of Islam and convert away from Christianity. My father couldn't be responsible for the death of me and my brothers, so he did. And they left. Two days later they returned. 
This time they came to me and my brothers. They said to me and my brothers, turn away from Islam. I turn to Islam, turn away from Christianity. Me and my brothers knew what to do. We said no. We follow Heshua. We love Heshua. Heshua has always been with us. They said, say the words. We replied, no, we can't. Here in Australia, we have less extreme examples of persecution. We are free to worship God if we please. We are free to go to church, free to go to youth group, free to own a Bible, free to meet up as Christians, free to pray. We are free to love Jesus. But that doesn't mean we don't face any trouble at all. Often we face peer pressure from our friends. They will think we are lame if we go to church. They will think we are lame if we act as Christians. Some of your friends will think you are lame if you don't get drunk at a party or if you don't do drugs. Some of you will face pressure from your parents who won't let you go to church, who won't want you to go to youth group. Some of your parents would rather you spend hours studying than going to youth group or G12 or church. These Christians that live in persecuted countries no doubt have it much worse. They're forced to choose between Jesus and having a peaceful or free life. And in extreme examples, between Jesus and keeping their life. We cannot try and understand the decisions that they have to make, but we can look at them as examples. These persecuted countries, these persecuted Christians in countries like North Korea, Iraq, Nigeria, they have to give up almost everything for their relationship with Jesus Christ. So we have to ask ourselves, what are we willing to give up for our relationship with Jesus Christ? As we go away tonight, there are two things you can be doing after hearing all this. The first thing is you can be praying for the people in these countries, that God will give them the strength and the courage they need to keep following Jesus. The second thing is you can be praying for yourself, that God will give you the strength and courage you need to be a Christian in Australia. If you want help in this, you can come talk to a leader tonight about how you can grow in your own relationship with Jesus so that you can be ready to face any persecution you might receive in Australia. Let me pray. Dear Lord, we thank you that Australia is a free country. We thank you that we are able to follow Jesus and not be persecuted for it harshly, Lord. We pray for the people in these persecuted countries, Lord. We pray that you look after them. We pray that you give them the courage and strength that they need to keep following you, Lord. I pray you keep them safe. Keep the pastors creating underground churches safe. I pray that we look to them as examples and try and understand what it means to make those decisions for our relationship with you, Lord. Amen.